Albert Einstein is known for his theory of relativity, which famously dictates that no known object can travel faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. This speed limit is also the reason why humans will never be able to send a spacecraft to explore beyond our local area of the Milky Way. But recently, scientists revealed a shocking new solution on how to travel faster than light. Will this be the key to unlocking space travel beyond the solar system? Well, let's find out, so make sure to stick till the end to know more about this mind-boggling discovery. The possibility of visiting other star systems is something that always fascinated us human beings, but the limitations of the technology that we have today makes this a distant possibility. The closest star system to the Earth is a triple star system known as Alpha Centauri. The two main stars are Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which form a binary pair as they are at least 4.35 light years away from the Earth, according to NASA. The third star is called Proxima Centauri, or the Alpha Centauri C, and that is about four and a quarter light years away from the Earth, making it the closest star to us. If physicists decided to give up, we would not have so many discoveries that we have today, and that's exactly what Eric Lenz from Göttingen University, Germany did. He finally found a viable solution to the dilemma, and it could turn out to be more feasible than other warp drives. But what exactly is a warp drive? For those of you who don't know, a warp drive is a device that distorts the shape of the space-time continuum. A spacecraft equipped with a warp drive will be able to travel at speeds greater than that of light by many orders of magnitude. But before explaining further, we need to take a look at the history behind finding out the speed of light. It was the year 1636 when a Danish astronomer by the name of Ole Romer, who was working at the Royal Observatory in Paris, demonstrated that light has a finite speed and does not travel instantaneously. This was achieved by studying the timing of the eclipses of Jupiter's moon Io. Romer estimated that the light would take about 22 minutes to travel a distance equal to the diameter of Earth's orbit around the Sun. This would give light the velocity of about 220,000 kilometers per second, which is about 26% lower than the true value of 299,792 kilometers per second. This theory was controversial at the time, and he was never able to convince the director of the Paris Observatory, Giovanni Domenico Cassini. However, it quickly gained support among other experts of the period, such as Christian Huygens and Isaac Newton. His discovery was finally confirmed nearly two decades after his death, with the explanation in 1729 of stellar aberration by the English astronomer James Bradley. Now, why is it that even today nothing can travel faster than light? Is it because we didn't try hard enough? Well, there's something known as the universal speed limit, which we commonly call the speed of light. It is the fundamental principle behind how the universe works. It's very difficult to visualize this if you haven't heard about it before. Scientists revealed that the faster you go, the more your spatial dimension in the forward direction shrinks and the slower your clock runs when viewed by an external observer. To make things easier, space and time are not a fixed background on which everything takes place in the same way as it always does. Instead, space and time can be warped and bent. So nothing can go faster than the speed of light because the simple reason that space and time do not actually exist beyond a point. The concept of speed requires measuring a certain amount of distance traveled in space during a certain period of time. The concept of speed does not even physically exist beyond the speed of light, at least according to our current understanding of the universe. So anything faster than light might be totally meaningless because it's like saying darker than black because there is nothing darker than black. So how exactly are we going to travel faster than light? Well, the answer lies in the research done by Dr. Eric Lentz, where he outlined a way where a rocket could theoretically travel faster than light over 186,000 miles per second. At that speed, astronauts could reach other star systems in just a few years. To put it into perspective, with the current technology that we have today, it'll take about 6,300 years to get to Proxima Centauri, which happens to be the closest star to the Sun. The only problem with Eric's scheme is the fact that it requires vast amounts of energy and it may not be able to propel a spacecraft. Lenz proposed that conventional energy sources could be capable of arranging the structure of space-time in the form of a soliton, 
which happens to be a robust singular wave. This soliton would act like a warp bubble which would contract the space in front of it and expand the space behind it. Unlike objects within spacetime, spacetime in itself can be bent, expand, or warp at any speed. So our spacecraft contained in a hyperfast bubble could arrive at its destination faster than it would in normal space without breaking any laws of physics, even Einstein's cosmic speed limit. Now, the idea of creating warp bubbles is not anything new. It was proposed way back in 1994 by Mexican physicist Miguel Acubieri. He called it the warp drive. But before Lenz's research, it was thought that the only way to produce a warp drive was by generating huge amounts of negative energy, or even by using some sort of undiscovered exotic manner, or by manipulation of dark energy itself. As a workaround for this problem, Lenz constructed an unexplored geometric structure of spacetime to derive a new family of solitons to Einstein's general relativity equations called positive energy solitons. Lenz's solitons appear to conform to Einstein's general theory of relativity and remove the need to create negative energy. Even then, space agencies still won't be able to build warp drives anytime soon. This is because Lenz's positive energy warp drive requires a huge amount of energy. To put things into perspective, a 100 meter radius spacecraft would require the energy equivalent to hundreds of times the mass of the planet Jupiter. For this to be practical, this requirement should be reduced by 30 orders of magnitude to be on par with the output of a modern nuclear fission reactor. Lentz is also exploring existing energy saving schemes to see if the energy required can be reduced to a practical level. But the problem is, any warp drive system would also need to overcome several other issues. Al Kuberi mentioned the horizon problem to be one of the most damaging problems because a warp bubble traveling faster than light cannot be created from inside the bubble as a leading edge of the bubble would be beyond the reach of a spaceship sitting at its center. The other problem is that you need a lot of energy to deform space all the way to the edge of the bubble, and the ship simply cannot put it there. After addressing several energy requirements, Lentz is now planning to devise a means of creating and accelerating the positive energy soliton from their constituent matter sources, and then confirm the existence of small and slow solitons in a laboratory, and this might finally address the horizon problem. This is extremely important to passing the speed of light with a fully autonomous soliton. Scientists have historically discouraged others from taking the idea of warp drives too seriously. But this new study might give us some hope by taking advantage of a loophole in general relativity. As of now, the basic laws of physics make warp drives impossible, which is why its common depiction has always remained only in science fiction films. But let's see this new discovery as a major step towards something big in the future.